Hi, Kate. Hi. Hello. Hello. I would like to speak, as this time I would like to speak about your piece, uh, Space Junk. Sure. Uh, can you give uh, me some, uh, some short context? Uh, who were commissioned and when it was premiered and who, who was uh, musicians? Oh yeah, sure. Well, yes, so Space Junk was written for Asko Schoenberg Ensemble um, for the World Minimal Music Festival. Um, and so it was uh, the ensemble and the festival that commissioned me for this, uh, for this piece. And uh, they, they were looking for, some, for a piece that was uh, sort of socially engaged, that's what they called it, and in my case, an environmental piece, something to do with the environment. And uh, this subject is interesting to me because um, my father works in this field and it, as a, um, in his, he works in the space industry, but specifically with space junk. And he manages a station in Can uh, Canberra called, uh, at Mount Stromlo uh, called EOS, a laser ranging system, <laughs> space tracking system, where they track uh, space junk and create a, a a, a visualized model in real time of where all the um, space junk lies in orbit to the Earth. Um, so I should say space junk uh, is the debris that is in orbit of the Earth that, and this is all the material that has been placed there by human intervention, hum the, the material that lies in orbit that's, that's man-made, um, which includes um, satellites, obsolete satellites, broken, uh, broken objects, um, broken space vehicles. Um, and there are millions and millions of, of, of pieces out there. <laughs> and it's, a, it's become an environmental issue, even though it's beyond our realm of sight or experience. Um, uh, it's an environmental issue be now because there's so much stuff that it's, that it's beginning to, um, um, there's a, the, an effect where even a small piece of junk, where it crashes into another piece of junk, ma it makes it splinter. I mean, because, it, because these pieces are moving so, so fast that even the smallest piece, um, if it collides with another object, has a, has a devastating impact. So, um, so a piece, uh, uh, collides with another piece and it breaks up into hundreds and hundreds of pieces which then break uh, collide with other pieces which break up into hundreds and hundreds of pieces so the amount of space debris is growing exponentially um, and it's a hazard for um, space vehicles for example the international space station for even if a tiny piece hits the surface of the the body of the of the station it, it can have a devastating effect um, uh, if you've seen the movie Gravity, <laughs> it's that uh, it's that sort of thing. It's not unrealistic. And uh, and with what uh, with this piece, what do you want to say to or what was the message to 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 viewers? Well, yeah. So it, the the I wanted to write this piece for two reasons. Um, one of the reasons was to demonstrate this this phenomena um, to to kind of create a, an an, 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 an oral model or a sonic model um, of the visual model that, that I see my father developing. Um, with the visual model, you see it in front of you. Uh, so it's something that, uh, that you touch, that you can, that, you can uh, that it's tangible, but a, a, a sonic model can, is immersive and you can be in it. So it's, it's like you have these sound events and it kind of represents uh, the, the pieces of space debris in, in sort of a real environment uh, as it would be if it was um, uh, uh, in, 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 uh, um, in the earth. <laughs> um, I, also that the, the, the space debris, it, well, I like the idea of being able to hear it. And it's, it's like a, um, an example is kind of like seeing footage and re hearing recordings of the of the first satellite Sputnik, um, with a rate with a radio receptor, you could hear it. Like so, even though it was out of sight's realm, you could you could hear it as it came over the horizon. It would go beep 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 beep. beep. So in a way, I created a piece which tracked the the um, the data collected by the space station um, as a. Uh, through, through these sound events like Sputnik. So each, um, 
each space debris is represented by um, by an instrument. Yes. Um, and and it, it in following the the sound of Sputnik also beeps like beep 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 beep, yes. beep, 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 beep different uh, so each uh, so each satellite is one instrument right yeah each and, each uh, object is represented by an instrument yes and yeah. it's like uh, you said sonification or what was the idea how you, you how you let's say how you how you how you how you translate into music the movement of one satellite yeah for sure so uh, I, uh, the station provided me with the data and uh, the first thing that they I, Gave to me was a graph, which looked like a piano, like a, a piano player roll. So it had sort of measurements of um, of the uh, of the object as they as they would um, appear over the horizon. So the the data tracks the satellite from the moment it appears over the horizon until where it sets, and then there's nothing while it's while while it's uh, um, on the other side <laughs> of the of the planet. Uh, so as it as it comes up, then you get data, and then nothing, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have uh, like this graph of all these different objects moving at different speeds, which is sort of dependent on the object itself, um, where it appears on the horizon, whether it's in it's foot or in the in the distance, or whether it's overhead, um, and the height of how how high it is from the Earth's surface. Um, the the, uh, the graph that was given to me, I loved it so much, uh, and I wanted to translate it into something like a piano roll, um, but I didn't for this particular project. I was working with instruments rather rather than mechanical player, uh, a mechanical player, uh, so I had to translate it for for uh, human humans musicians to be able to read. So this graph actually in the end was um, wasn't very practical because the, because the the, the discreteness, the discrete points of the um, measurements were too fine to be able to translate into musical metric, a musical metric system. Um, so in the end, I had to ask if they could present me with, with like numerical values that I could then translate into MIDI. Um, so that's what I worked with. I, 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 uh, um, by translating the, the, the values into MIDI, I could then, um, uh, make a score which 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 re represented in as as, as accurate deep as accurate as detail as I could considering the limitations for for hu human musicians to read <laughs> um, and uh, I, yeah so at first the the uh, the material got tra it was translated into pitch so um, uh, so the yeah the parameter that was um, that, that we were dealing with was was pitch. So as uh, as the objects are rising, then the pitch is also rising. So it'll be like, which in a way is, makes sense and it, it, it's in yes. sort of very direct. But I didn't think that that was a very accurate um, way of depicting the objects um, and also not aesthetically musical in a pleasing way. So um, I translated the pitch material into uh, into dynamic material instead. So I chose one pitch for each object, like the beep, 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 um, uh, and uh, uh, from like the softest dynamic to the loudest dynamic. So as it appears, it's very soft, and that it's overhead, then it's louder, and then it disappears again. So it's like. So all the objects, um, well, I have a different pitch for all the objects to sort of delineate the difference between uh, between each piece. Um, and that also creates a sort of a set, an aesthetic. Um, I base the harmony more or less on the harmonic series, yes. or rep a representation of the harmonic series. Um, I, and um, well, I chose that uh, like a, um, uh, basically, the, the objects uh, sonically appear over a, a drone, um, which in my mind is a fundamental. So you have these sort of harmonic series notes over a fundamental. Um, and uh, and uh, in a way that kind of creates an interesting juxtaposition between this very mechanical structure and the sort of the organic nature of frequency and sound itself. Um, and uh, I 
find the correlation between the harmonic series and space fascinating <laughs> on, on many levels and sort of from an acoustic point of view and um, resonance point of view, but also historical point of view in relation to the harmony of the spheres and how that is kind of built, built that's built into both science and music as music was a science and is also an expressive art. Yes. And um, mm, how big was Orchester? Could you say it once again, sorry? How many, uh, how many musicians there was and what? Oh. Oh yeah, so it was Asko Schoenberg Ensemble. Um, off the top of my head, because I don't have my score in front of me, uh, uh, this is a large chamber ensemble. It's, so it's not an orchestra, it's uh, up to 20 players. Okay. <laughs> yes. It was big. And, and, and what was the logic, how you, how you, how you selected the, which, uh, which musicians takes, or which instruments takes which satellite? Yeah. Uh, I was, I was quite, uh, I wanted to treat all the instruments equally, actually, like they're all, the, the uh, criteria is more the character and shape of the, of the objects or the sonic objects than, than, um, than anything else. Um, uh, they, 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 they portray the pure data, the, the pure material, and then um, around that, there's also an electro, electroacoustic sound installation which which deals with the it's deals with the same uh, um, data and the same model, um, uh, but I use samples um, to um, to represent the the, um, the the movement of the object. But the samples I use, rather than using pitch or, or rather than using um, instruments, I use uh, words, and the words um, I base upon the um, Psalm, which is which is the traditional Mizrere, um, which is very famous, very very famous um, uh, a musical um, reference as well as religious reference and traditional reference. Uh, it's very these are very powerful words of um, um, but, yeah, basically saying, God, the Creator, have mercy upon me, and I thought that that was. Um, a very interesting, well, interesting is a very, very basic word for something which is very deep, but I find with the compositional process, it's always about uh, exploring the human condition. And in this case, it's the human condition in relation to a mechanized um, man-made artificial system, which in this case is the, is the satellites. Um, the, and the satellites and the space junk, of, of course, play a huge role in our life, and yet we don't think about it, and most people don't even know about it. But our entire telecommunication network is um, is connected to this. Um, so the juxtaposition between the, the very humanness of, of people playing, musicians playing with each other and communicating with each other, uh, in 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 contrast to the to the very systematic model, almost inhuman, very rigid and uncompromising um, uh, um, relentless repetition of these of, of these um, beeping objects uh, cr creates a, a a very uncomfortable tense feeling. And the idea of using this this very this completely uh, very deep, very beautiful uh, traditional ancient um, text in in Latin of the the deepest human experience that one can have of an individual crying out for mercy to the Creator. Um, I was um, quite inspired by uh, the Vatican, the Sistine Chapel um, of, um, of Michelangelo's God where, and where he touches Adam. But the idea of, the, of, of God no longer being able to touch Adam because, because, the, because um, it's, it's distracted, it's, it's interfered with <laughs> by, this, by this robotic system that, that exists right in that realm between the heavens and earth that, God can no longer touch um, Adam, or, or the the communication is broken up and splintered, like the space junk itself. So the like the data of the space junk I, I 
has, it has these words from the miserere all splintered and broken up. So you can no longer really hear, you can't hear it anymore, but you get glimpses of the words. It's sort of like they get passed on from satellite to satellite. Like, as like um, all these conversations from, from mobile phones get passed on from one satellite to the next. <laughs> um, and so it all gets kind of broken and splintered and, and it's all floating around itself. So you have these humans who are, who are on, on, on the stage playing music together. And then you have this, this atmospheric beeping uh, satellite system sound sonic installation around everybody that sort of exists in the realm where you can't see it you can't touch it it's it's out there um so it's in a way it's very symbolic as well as being experiential and immersive good and um so you so, so you work with so, so you got some kind of data file right of this moments. Yeah, do you use yeah. some kind of software to proceed and uh, the, the data and then you put into scores or it was uh, or you just took directly data and, and do not work with some, some, some let's say how it's a data pro processing uh, uh, yeah you know that's a really good question yes there was and i have to say i can't remember off the top of my head uh, but the 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 numerical material was translated into midi data in midi data um, and then the, I use that in my in my software programs. On right, I use Sibelius actually, so yes. it's really cool that I could just open up the data in Sibelius. <laughs> you directly, right? You convert it into this data into media data, right? For yeah, guiding uh, sounds, right? So, which is yeah, exactly. And then you listen, yeah. and then you start thinking what to which instruments and and, and how and how to. Yeah. Well, a little bit, but I had to translate everything still with the raw data. Um, well, firstly, it was in pitch and secondly, it was um, the in a very strange, very strange rhythmic divisions. Yes. So it, it took me hundreds of hours <laughs> to do this, to, yes. to comb through the data so that it was in some sort of readable language that could be translated into musical material. Yes, yes. And what was the process of, of translating? Oh yeah, so like I just get like this this spider web of mess, <laughs> and I take each line and I look at it. Basically, duration was the key. Um, so basically, I, I try to find the beginning and the end of the of the of the data, and then sort of um, make a duration of that, and then make a sort of analysis of what happens in between the beginning and the end. Yes. And then I make that into my own composition. So then I make it into the into these rhythmic patterns, which are my which in a way are my own. It's sort of an approximate an approximation of what I see yes. um, in the in the material itself. But yeah, essentially, it, duration is the important information um, because that's when the event begins and when it ends, and everything in between is a composition. <laughs> right. And. Um... And what was, uh, so I understand that it was not only like it's this uh, orchestra, right? Uh, but there was as well as some some video, right? So it was a multimedia work. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, the station also provided me, along with the da the numerical data, they also pr provided me with a visual representation, a visual representation of the, of the data, um, which essentially was, well, in, it was an, a simplified version of their real-time model. Of, a, of the earth and all the pieces of space junk um which you see it's um and i mean i have to say i, I i'm uh, i had this experience where because i i've been what uh, i mean my father has been working there for uh, maybe uh, uh 25 years or something like that and uh so even when i was a little girl i watched the model grow from from being something that was quite simple to something which I, I have to say, uh, the, it looks like the, the the earth is covered with ants or, or with 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 uh, some sort of growing fungus. It looks it's just shimmering with this this thing. So you, you can almost not see the globe anymore. You can only see the, the shimmer from all the junk. Um, so uh, that that simplified um, uh, visual model of of the space junk was also. Uh, used in the piece 
to to as a point of reference so you could yes. see what you were hearing yes so it's like stand to step right so it's like two two uh, so this, there is a visual map or visual or something or something video where you see this the model of how this uh satellites flies if and, and and then you hear them simultaneously yes. so that i can see yes. and i can somehow relate what i what I listen it just this visual material helps me to 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 understand uh, helps me to perceive uh, mm, yeah what? uh, what's going on on the stage right yeah yeah exactly yeah exactly in a way I guess it would be a little bit like having a map of something it's like you, you have a card while you're walking through the landscape but the the acoustic experience the, the sonic experience is like the landscape itself can you imagine uh, it's the same piece, but without the uh, multimedia part or without the uh, video? Yes, but for, for sure. I, of course, always, I think, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the piece of music has to work on every level. So um, so as a composition without the visual visualness, it's still, you can, it's still immersive. It's still an interesting piece to listen to. It's still experiential. Um, but you might not know what it is that you're listening to unless mm -hmm. you read about it or like oh there's some other thing um, or at least in a way but I, 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 the experience of walking into this piece is that you, you do walk into this this sort of universe where you can hear that these that these these events are happening so in a way it it, it is a very direct um uh, representation of, of what you what's actually going on so perhaps you do perceive it without with or without um the visual material and uh, what kind of sensorial experience uh, you would like to create for what was the idea to create for uh, for viewer or listener yeah so that's a, a good question because um it's a very um i find this a very confronting subject um uh, and usually my my pieces are are, are very organic and very much about the way in which which music interacts and, and evolves and, and embraces itself. Uh, and in this case, also partly because of the of the rigid representation of the data, um, it's not organic in form. It's very much uh, it's quite robotic, I guess, or mechanical. Um, as and the feeling the, the the feeling is, which I think is a representation of the. Of the of the terrifying situation or the immensity of this overwhelming environmental um, uh, um, phenomena, it's quite menacing. It, it, you feel unsettled and uneasy. It's a, it's terrifying. It's uh, it's 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 uneasy, um, and uh, um, uh, that's uh, that's intentional. <laughs> The the, the 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 want of music to be human and to to be kind of to, to be kind and warm and beautiful, but sort of not letting it or holding it back, and it just runs. It's just like the raw truth, the raw data, without any excuses or or justifications or or explanations. It just is what it is. Yes. And uh, what was um, compositional principles the main one? I understand. It's like sound installation, right? There is no beginning and end. What else is, is, is important to you? Yeah, so that's uh, that's part of part of the piece that that you could walk into it at any moment. It's ongoing. It has no beginning and end. And the development, in a way, oh, it's very it's rigid because it's based on the data. But the development happens in the moments rather than in the overall structure. Um, uh, and um, it's what's well, divide, divided into four sections where the where the fundamental changes. And this, Sort of rep represents four different periods of time. If, if you're thinking about like the the the, the globe at different, uh, and if, if you came back every four hours or something, and the light is slightly different, the angles have, have changed, um, and the color is different. So so the fundamental kind of represents time in that respect, por portions of time, um, uh, or time lapse, I guess. Um, the, the the moments that happen in the piece, the, the sort of like hidden moments that some something strange happens um, at a moment, and uh, it's it's like an event that passes, some, some, something colourful in the atmosphere, some, something something strange. You're like, where, what, what is that? What, you, you find it in the in the in the experience. It, it's like a 
little little, little bits of treasure that you you discover, um, and then they disappear. You know, the, the little idiosyncrasies of um, of of moments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, can you imagine the same piece or similar piece, right, where you would compose but not taking the data as input? Is it possible to create? Could be possible that you create on your own imagination or or, or um, it was so crucial that it's not be possible with, uh, without uh... uh well in this case the the question of the piece is is literally to represent the data so um so so that's kind of fundamental to what the piece is communicating um, I could certainly make a sound in uh, this um, mess of space, right? The mess of all the movements around. Well, yeah, it's part, but it's partly that, but it's also that it's a direct representation of, of literally of the data. I wanted to hear what the data looked like, or yes. at least when you see a list of numbers, it doesn't mean very much. But if you hear it in, in yes. time and space, then then suddenly you have like a a, 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 a very a very realistic sort of. Um, a um, representation. Um, so I could certainly make an imitation not using data, and I could certainly make a, a sort of immersive sonic sound installation, definitely. But it would be about something else. It wouldn't be about the data. It would be about creating a, a portrait or a, a painting, a sonic painting of the idea of space junk or something. Right. right. And um... What kind of softwares you used in, during the piece, or hardwares? Software. Um, well, yeah. So I mentioned the MIDI, the MIDI programs initially. Essentially, I make a score and Sibelius, and then I use both Logic and Ableton Live to translate the MIDI material in an electroacoustic realm with using samples, which was my voice and also a voice collected collected from from another from other sources um, speaking the, this the sound the, the miserere um, and uh, yeah so the durations are uh, I, I, I use a MIDI file basically I use a MIDI file and then use that to determine the, the durations and um, also for the samples so in a way like my software is is, is pretty straightforward to be honest. Yes. Yes, yes. And what was, um, can you tell me about the process, how long it took for all the composition and, and, and what it started? It started with the idea and then data and then, data and then creating sound materials and then giving, or how it was? Yeah. Uh, Approximate stages. Of that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, it, all of these, the, well, the piece itself took took a very long time. I mean, even from the moment that I was invited to write the piece, then I'm already planning the piece. O already, I mean, to be honest, I actually have, in a way, um, thought about this piece for many years, in already in the year, a year long time ago, 2000 or 2001 or something like that. I made a piece collaborating with my father to make a sonification of the data. Um, so in a way, and that was using Max MSP, um, which was also a really interesting process of literally translating numbers into sound. Um, uh, but that was in a very basic way. And I, I've since then had the ambition to develop it into like a proper full, full on piece and especially one for, for live musicians, which is completely other thing. Um, yeah, so a, a lot of this piece was um, was uh, figuring out what I could do, how I could do it, making a structure or an idea of a structure, and then um, also like a lot of uh, the time was taken just on basic things of translating numbers to to um, to MIDI to. to to something that's readable, and then and and then uh, yeah, it's, it's translating to something that I could use. It's in the first place. Um, so that took most of the time, and then the score itself. But well, still, it's just hours and hours of of laborious 
notation, <laughs> making something which is a concept into something that's readable for yes. musicians. Yes, yes. And um, how musicians uh, was involved? Uh, do they somehow change or improve the, uh, the composition? Or did you, uh, or is there, whether there was a feedbacking sessions and whether these feedbacking sessions was important here in that piece? Uh, well, uh, in all honesty, uh, aside from uh, the musicians interpreting what I've written, uh, like dynamics and articulations and musicality, there was no there was no communication. It's I gave I give them a score and then we play the score. And it's uh, like essentially due to to time time. Well, it's always the case to time restraint. I mean, I, I have to say I very rarely uh, collaborate with musicians to build a score. It's not really what I do. It's more like I made a score and give it to musicians. Right. And then they're like, uh, can't play that high. <laughs> no, that's usually it's, I'm <laughs> quite well trained in orchestration. So, so usually there isn't that much communication except on the sort of final stages of interpretation. Right. But as correctly as I understand that the biggest, uh, the longest part was the part when you, when you receive data and, and how you convert this data into uh, songs, you know, yes? So this was a uh, so very, very long and tough, uh, tough, uh, tough period, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what was the main learnings for that? What to learn? Because it was, uh, you know, it's not, not any composer use a big data, just uh, take, uh, takes a huge uh, pile of data, or huge database of data and tries to, to, uh, to, to convert into a piece, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the, I think the big question or the big learning thing is, um, is the power of sonification. And sonification is a powerful tool and you, you, can hear, uh, you can hear data in a way which makes it uh, more accessible than if you just see numbers or whatever. Yes. Um, and uh, I, I, I mean, it's possible, it's just as possible to program sound as it is visual. V visuals, it's like, it's a no brainer in a way. Um, and of course, well, uh, yeah, what, what, more, what more can I say? I think there's probably uh, more, more streamlined ways of programming um, sonic material than what I did. I, I was very, it was very analog in my case. I personally really like analog. I like the, the tangibility in the, uh, of working with my hands in order to realize the material in a very visceral way. Yes. Uh, I I, li I literally get to know every single satellite <laughs> by touching it <laughs> through through um, through the score. So in a way, I'm also building up the characters, and of, of course, the compositions itself are making little characters, little little shapes, little 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 sort of um, signatures of each um, of each piece, which is a completely art an artistic interpretation. It's not scientific; it's a, it's yes. artistic. I make a little story for each. Each object, each sonic object. Um, uh, so, uh, so I find it interesting, and that's the biggest learning thing. It's it's a it's an inquiry. It's it's like a, it's an exploration of something. It's like here's yeah. here's the data. How can I how can I use it? <laughs> yes, yes. And do you have some maybe uh, some suggestions, right? Because uh, to other composers who would like to do the same, because at least uh, I I see quite many. And sonifications regarding uh, whether it could be new media art or sound art, but not so many uh, sonifications of big data. Uh, when we came to, I don't know, you know, ensembles or or, or full format uh, musical pieces, right? It's not it, it's not so common, right, yet to to sonify and to use this big data composers. What is just maybe your suggestions to to, to other composers who would like to, to try it on, on their own. Oh yeah, sure. Well, the biggest uh, ch uh, question I think is um, the question of aesthetic, um, because I know I like sonification itself is, is is huge. It's not unknown about and all in like in the space industry, for example, you have like a department of sonification. It's it's an accepted form of, of in, information of communication of information. 
Uh, but the thing, as, as like I noticed it also with the visual representation, which is a visualization of the of the data from the scientist's point of view, um, it's not aesthetic. It's just literally data represented visually, and that also has its limitations. Although it kind of just speaks the numbers in a direct way, it's not that accessible or interesting to look at, and it, and because of that, also misses a lot. But if you have a, an artist interpreting the visualization or the sonification, that they they highlight and emphasize aspects of the sonification which make certain parts of it important, um, and the importance gives it weight, and the weight gives it more accessibility. Um, so, so having an artist interpret the data uh, creates a. a, a um, uh, an environment which uh, which can be understood by uh, by by large numbers of people, whether they're trained in the field or not. It's about communicating, and um, always whether it's data or whether it's not data. It's art is about communicating, um, and so the the role of the artist is is vital. Um, so so yeah, I think it's a very interesting collaboration, working with the scientists who who collect the who collect the information, who do the measurements, and the artists that, that interpret the information and the, and, and the data in a way that's communicable. And um, last question, maybe there's something which you wanna say about the piece and I didn't ask, right, the question. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, well, I find the, the idea of creating environments <laughs> sonically fascinating um, and uh, I'd really like to go further in that realm. So thank you very much for uh, <laughs>